Hello, David Nassin with a rundown of lines and tubes on chest x-rays using multiple images available on the web. Here's the image with all of the annotations removed. We'll discuss each line in turn. The first device I'd suggest looking for on every image is the endotracheal tube, checking its position relative to the carina. Next, I suggest you look at the vascular catheters, and to assist you in that, we've outlined internal jugular veins, subclavian veins, brachiocephalic veins, and SVC as well as the approximate location of the pulmonary arteries. This patient has three separate central venous catheters, including a subclavian porticath with tip in the right atrium, a non-tunnel right IJ central venous catheter with tip at the right atrial superior vena cava junction, and a Swan-Gans catheter passing through the left internal jugular vein through a sheath. The tip of the Swan-Gans catheter is in the right main pulmonary artery. This patient also has two enteric tubes, one of which is more typically seen as a feeding tube, and this one is looped back upon itself in the stomach, normally with its tip in the jejunum. And the other tube, we can barely make out is the skinny radiopaque stripe within it, extending into the stomach and off the inferior margin of the film. You'll also see some skin staples from a recent abdominal surgery, small bilateral pleural effusions, and left greater than right basilar airspace opacities. Feel free to pause the video and see if you can see all of these devices with the highlighting removed. Here's a patient post chest tube placement for right chest injury. We see the endotracheal tube and the carina, and we see the right chest tube itself with its proximal side hole well within the thoracic cavity and the tip against what appears to be a widened mediastinum. Here we have another chest x-ray of a patient with sternotomy wires and evidence of prior coronary artery bypass grafting who has a tunneled dual lumen large bore dialysis catheter in place. You can see the two lumens here, and this portion of the tube is the subcutaneous portion, piercing the internal jugular vein approximately here with tip in the mid-right atrium, which ordinarily is fairly low for a central venous catheter, but is an ideal position for a dialysis catheter that needs a high exchange rate. Here's an adult male with a left arm pick that extends into the mid superior vena cava in a chest x-ray that is otherwise relatively normal with mild right basilar atelectasis. We have another quite complicated x-ray, this time focusing on the enteric tube, which means we are clipping the lung apices, starting with the endotracheal tube, which is borderline low with its tip just above the carina. You'll notice that we have two large bore chest tubes, both with the most proximal side hole well within the thoracic cavity. This patient has a feeding tube in place with tip at the second portion of the duodenum near the junction with the third portion. This tube is post-pyloric, so it can be used as a feeding tube, but more typically it is present with the tip in the jejunum. A little bit more difficult to see is the nasogastric tube. Let me take that highlighting away for a second and put it back in. You'll see that the proximal port of this particular type of nasogastric tube is very close to the tip, and both of these tubes would be considered in good position. Two more devices that are a little bit more difficult to spot on this examination are the left internal jugular vein central venous catheter and an IVC filter. Take those highlighting away so that you can see them better. Here we have a very complicated chest x-ray with overlying cardiac leads, an endotracheal tube, and a nasogastric tube extending into the stomach. This patient has an intraaortic balloon pump that is partially filled with helium gas. Helium is used because it can be rapidly inflated and deflated with every cardiac cycle, and if the balloon ruptures, helium will be rapidly absorbed and shouldn't cause an embolization or blockade. There are radiopaque markers at the proximal and distal end of the balloon, with the proximal end in the aortic arch, perhaps a little too close to the origin of the left subclavian artery, and the other in the abdominal aorta at the level of L2. A few other things to take note of on this view is the airspace opacity in the left lower lobe. We have partial silhouetting of the left hemidiaphragm and complete silhouetting of the lateral border of the aorta, and we can see several air bronchograms. In addition, you'll notice retained contrast in the collecting system of both kidneys. This is presumably related to previous iodinated intravenous contrast administration in this person who presumably has decreased renal function. Here we have a patient with a left chest dual lead pacemaker. The leads extend through the left subclavian vein, and one of the leads curls up into what is presumably the right atrial appendage, and the other extends through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. Thank you very much for your attention. Check out the links below to the original images, and I hope you feel a little bit better about lines and tubes on chest x-rays.